Hello everyone and welcome to Transforming Aerospace Product Development with JAMA Connect for Airborne System. My name is Marie and I will be the host for today's webinar. We will walk you through JAMA Connect for Airborne System and explore how this solution can help commercial aviation, unmanned systems or military aircraft systems teams to build safer aircraft. Great, thank you. And welcome everyone to the webinar today. I'd like to walk you through a few things, uh, kind of whet your appetite a little bit, and then we're gonna hand off to Carrie and she's gonna show you the, the actual demo, the picks and clicks and see how all this information can be put to use for your team. So when we talk to our friends in the field, uh, customers, peers, subject matter experts, we hear a lot about the increase in complexity required to design new products uh, and, and systems. Some of the things we, we tend to hear, uh, we hear about development cycles. They're, they're increasingly complex, and this is driving need for automation and more modern tools. Uh, Cross-domain collaboration is, is not really happening very much. Um, there, there's different tools and processes in the different groups and the different domains and things that they use that, that really don't play nice together. Uh, the connected products and systems that, that we're developing right now, uh, they're not just complicated. They, they also inject significant risk into the certification process. Uh, in, ensuring compliance and safety systems is, is really, it's difficult and time consuming. Uh, that, that, that is just not changing and it's, it's, you know, all these different items is just, you know, kind of adding, piling on there. Uh, the regulatory environment is changing. Uh, we're, we're seeing changes that, that are coming from things like urban air mobility and other technology drivers that, that's driving changes to the regulatory environment. Uh, and, and we're really seeing rapid changes within the, uh, the, the market itself. So there's a number of different drivers that are changing the dynamics uh, of system development. You know, a couple of examples, uh, the push into electronic, electric propulsion. It, it's very rapid. Uh, right now, the improvements in battery technology is really driving down costs, and, and the the idea of commercial hybrid electric flight is, is very much in sight. Uh, urban air mobility, I mentioned that uh, kind of is one of the, the new things coming out in the last slide. Uh, those vehicles are expected to accelerate over the next decade. However, there's a lot of challenges that need to be worked out, and the, the regulations need to be established. So back to that idea of the regulatory environment is, is changing over time. Uh, and this is to make sure things are airworthy and also the use of the airspace itself, you know, over our heads. Uh, so the question is, is are you ready to meet these new challenges? You know, are your requirements, tools, and processes ready? So I thought we'd uh, take a look, a little bit of a walk through the idea of requirements management maturity. Uh, just to kind of st start to set the table. The most basic approach that we tend to see is, is a document-based approach. Uh, and, and even if the documents are digital, you know, your, your typical Microsoft Office formats, uh, Word, PowerPoint, uh, things like that, they, the, the utility to the firm is limited. And, and documents tend to get stuck in silos. Uh, quite often, this is, uh, you know, things are thrown in a share pool or uh, things are maybe thrown in SharePoint if you're lucky. Uh, and th this really doesn't get you where you need to go. The, the visibility and collaboration uh, across the, your organization is limited. It's, to, you know, those that are in the know, those that have the right access. And, and then we talk about, thing about scalability. Well, it, it's, it's non-existent. I mean, think about having to bring together all the various domains while managing the access control, uh, the, the editing rights, uh, revisions over time. It's just not achievable. And, and compliance, it, it's Herculean. Folks have to throw massive amounts of time trying to, to pull together all this information from all these different sources to try to present the package of information that's necessary to, to achieve certification. But the next area that we tend to see is the idea of legacy tools. And those using legacy tools tend to be very much straddled with outdated technology. Uh, the modern multi-domain system uh, development processes, they're, they're not supported with, with legacy tools. And this extends into the world of software. Uh, we're seeing software everywhere. Everything has software in it now. Uh, legacy tools have you know, very limited ability to support variants of Agile, uh, like Safe or, or Scrum, depending on the, the flavor, the variant that, that your firm might use. 
And those legacy tools tend to have been developed with a, a specific focus. Uh, as a result, when they're, they're used outside of that, that area of origin, I'm, I'm going to try and use this for, for Agile. I'm going to try and use it for maybe electronics or something. If it, it, it's sort of like a square peg in a round hole. Things don't really work very well. So our, our next step is the, the most mature process is, is a, a data centric. And, and this isn't just a goal. This is today. This is available today. Uh, firms that are data centric, they're able to ensure they have a single source of truth. They don't have multiple versions of those documents uh, floating around in email or, or in shared folders or, or, or different SharePoint uh, uh, collections. Um, they're able to use model-based approach approaches to uh, allow those their teams to digitally model and relate information together. This gains a lot of benefit from those digital connections of the different artifacts and information. We can extend this into integrations with the other systems in the design cycle. I mean, there's more than one tool used to design products, right? And, and being able to feed those requirements to the mechanical folks that use CAD, feeding it to the simulation folks that are they're just doing, uh, you know, high fidelity and low fidelity simulation, and, and downstream to the folks that are doing testing, this adds more value. Uh, and, and this really feeds right into the, the, the integrated and, and having those integrated and data centric processes, those firms now have traceability. Now we can look back from the physical product, the finished product that, that comes off the assembly line with a serial number. We can look back to, to the individual design features that were, that were determined that, that are necessary along the way and back to the individual requirements that drove the decisions to, to design a product. And, and collaboration is enhanced uh, and is supporting real-time feedback, knowing what's going on, having modern capabilities like at mentions as, as you're able to chat right within your tools, uh, having the ability to review things in a much more robust manner. Digital transformation is the goal for, for all the firms. And if you want to lead the industry, and if you want to transform the airborne industry, how are you going to do that? How are you going to get there with document-based legacy processes and tools? You're not. If you want to change the game, you, you need to bring digital processes and data together. You, you want to use those to drive your innovation. That's the definition of digital transformation. Uh, when, when you capture your customer and regulatory requirements digitally, connect them to your system architecture, your design engineering, uh, to your simulation, you're bringing your teams together. You're in, within the virtual world. You're creating your digital thread. Uh, so ultimately, th this is where you're going to see the benefits of getting products to market faster, improve cost effectiveness, uh, supporting the new remote work reality. We're, we're living in a, in, in a, still in a COVID world and geographically distributed teams. 